Hi, Sportster Paul here. I'm going to talk about Iron Sportster and even K model generators and a few regulators. We got a whole mess from 40 years of Sportsters. Uh, it starts, there's four basic generators. There's two 12 volt ones, a later model, 1982, and that, and then the main 12 volt one that most people are going to be dealing with is the 1965. A, they brought out 65 first six months, screwed it up, they made a 65A. That's the 12 volt, 1965 all the way to 84. Then I think 85, they put that weird alternator behind the clutch drum, and we're not going to talk about that because that's not a sportster in my book. Before that, the K model had a 19, or a, well, it's just called a model 52K. And I got one of those here off of my K model. Here it is, you can see on the sky cam. All right, let's go over here. And what's right side up? I guess this is right side up, All right? And let's see if I can focus that a little better. There we go. So, you know, Harley Davidson, 52K. I think this doesn't mean regulator reg. I think that's registered trademark is what they're saying. So let's pull back a little bit and you can see there it is. It's got like a rounded thing, which they went back to in 1982. You know, but this rounded cover over the whole thing. We'll be tearing into these in later shows. This is just the overview. It's got a gear, I assume pressed on, thanks to the Harley K model website, which I love. Uh, I looked it up and they've got, I'll link to the, page that explains some of the generator stuff. They explain that this thing has a pin. I don't even think you'd be able to see it. Can you see it right there? There's just barely, a, you, you can see there's a pin there. Can we get closer? A little bit. Can we focus? Kind of. So there you can see that pin. That pin's got to come out. And then I assume it's kind of a drive. It's got a, a square looks like a squarish kind of drive. I haven't been into this ever, so that'll be a, a joy, both of all of us getting into it. Uh, I think this is a Delco regulator. Later ones say Delco Remy on the top. This one's kind of rusted and worn. You can just barely see the same markings. Six volt, right? 1952. And then in 1958, they went to one very similar Consider it the early prototype of the 12 volt generator. This is a 65A, I'm going to show you. But the, the 58, model 58, it had cut, it had uh, a smooth bearing here and then cut out uh, oiling plugs or, you know, lube cups. So that's, this thing is meant to mount, you know, up here, slightly different setup, different years. Like I say, you can go to the parts books, they're for free. You can download PDFs on the Harley K model website and look at the parts books for what takes this and what mounts directly and all these business. But then there's, there's cups. That's, what, that's why this thing has these cutouts here, right? Can you see? So, so those cutouts were to clear the cup. Then in 1961, they went to the six volt model 61, which is the same as these newer ones. It's got a needle bearing in the end. So no cups, no smooth bearing on that side. Then as I said, 65, let's bring that 65 generator back. I should mention, even from the 58, they started, they changed the, uh, let's see, 60, yeah, for the Sportster, they kind of went to this type of gear. Let's get this in here so you can see. This type of gear, a flat washer, and then they use a prevailing torque nut, which I hate. I tend to put a lock washer and uh, no Loctite, just a lock washer, but lock washers wear out, as I explained, working for that military contractor I learned. Use a lock washer once, throw it away. Get a brand new lock washer, they're a dime a dozen at Home Depot. New lock washer. So I do that. It comes with this strap. I think this might be original with this uh, flat screw. So the strap is so you can get to the brushes, inspect the brushes. This one might be rebuilt. You see how nice and clean the copper is? So I'll have to check this one out. Uh, this strap, you put the gap here so it's 
on a solid part here, not here. Other, I, I used to run without it, just figuring it was good to get the air in, like in my cone motor, just let, leave it open. Uh, then I decided there's enough garbage. Water didn't mind. I'd be in rain. I'd get caught in the rain, and you know it seemed the electrics worked fine. Now, the main story about electrics, and one of the reasons I have so much of this stuff, I was burning up regulators and generators every month or two or whatever. I, it was my main drive. It was my only transportation for a while. My 77 Sportster. So I, uh, it took years to figure it out. It was nothing with the generator or the voltage regulator. It was somebody put 16-inch tires on the back, and they're wider, and there's that wire that goes to the taillight brake lamp that when you push down on the back of the bike, the edge of that tire was rubbing those wires raw and shorting them to ground. And of course, if you had the brake light on, it would short worse. If you had a, you know, two up gal on the back, it would short worse. And that intermittent shorting, that pounding of short, 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 that was what was burning up my generators. So it's not always what you think it is. You know, look for the root cause, not just the symptoms. So for voltage regulators, I showed you that one. Here's probably one adapted. Can you see this one? With this, because for a while they mounted on the generator, but then they mounted back under your seat, right? On the left side. And it looks like either this was a, uh, this looks homemade, right? I might have made this, as a matter of fact, from the radius edges and the in exact holes to put this regulator. So maybe it is a 12. In the, in the 12 volt world, Kickstart only bikes took a Bosch regulator, same one used in a Volkswagen. The electric start with, with the big battery used a Delco. Now you can see there, can I get a glare on it just right? Delco, there you go, Delco Remy, made in USA, don't see that anymore. These were for that big battery, it's got, an, there's two coils in here, a cutout coil. So when the generator drops out, it disconnects the generators, that way the battery doesn't flow backwards. And then the other coil is a little vibrating coil that regulates the voltage, that keeps it at 13.2, or 13.7 to 14.2 is where nominally lead acid batteries like to be. It depends on the temperature, a lot of stuff. This Delco one, it's got a third coil and that's a current limiting coil. Because I guess the theory was, well, if that big giant H3, whatever it is, battery is dead, 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 and you fire that bike up, it'll put so much current out of the, the generator, it'll damage the generator windings or damage the commutator or maybe even the regulator itself or blow fuses. Who knows what problems they were having. So that regular, then by the time they went to this, they had an electronic, here's, you know, the, it looks like the aftermarket. I'll show you the aftermarket. Here's the electronics. It's got, you know, the, the classic. So this is, I'm almost sure, is a, is a factory unit meant for these regulators. There was an electronic unit, I think one year only. I made a bunch of notes. Uh, in the article, I'll kind of spell it out. Looks like one year only for the 65A generator, the one before this. Now, 65A we showed you. Let's put this guy over here and show you the generator that solved all kinds of problems. That's this one made by Hitachi. Back out. See it right there? Now, interesting, I looked in, I went through all the parts books. I didn't find this number anywhere. Right? There's a different number that they were listing, but it's bigger. Let's see what's a good way to show you here. Stop. Don't fall on my foot, please. Where is that? 65A. Right? So, well, let's put it this way so it's flush here, right? So, if we, you can kind of see, right? This one is, it sticks out a lot further here. So more metal, more iron, still spinning. It, it solves the problem, which is why I think it's a shame they just didn't leave the generator on at 85 and on instead of making that like a big bike with a total loss, you know, full output all the time and the regulator shorts it. So the quickest, dirtiest trip, those, you know, those are the overview. There's aftermarket regulators. This is a CCI, custom chrome. The, I like it because it's 
similar to the Franks, and I had great luck with the Franks regulator. I've got a brand new Franks in the bubble wrap one day I'll bring out. The electrics work good, but the problem is sometimes you've got to really wrap the bike after it first starts because there's residual magnetism that with mechanical points, the points are closed, the tiniest little bit of voltage will build up that generator and get it up to 12 volts. With an electronic one, there's a transistor in there, and you've got to get up to a volt or two before anything will happen. And sometimes, if there's a big air gap inside or it's kind of weak, the residual magnetism left in the generator isn't enough to get it going. That same residual business is with polarizing. When you polarize a generator, take the field, connect it to ground, which is full output, touch a battery to the armature. Everything gets good after that, so you can polarize them. Otherwise, they'll just as soon run back, you know, they'll make negative 12 volts. It's positive. Even taking them apart and putting them back together, I've never had one go negative. So it's not as big as a problem as some people make it out to be. There is a guy on eBay. He, they could have made an alternator, right? This is a Denso, which is short for Nippon Denso, which is a division of Toyota, if I remember correctly. This is an alternator that will fit in the space on the frame rails. And there's a machinist, bless his heart, he pulls this apart, he builds a front end so that this mounts in your Sportster. Uh, it's got a regulator built in, but the problem is you've got to feed power down to it. You need a wire so that when you turn the bike on, this gets powered up. That's the way it has to work, I guess. So it doesn't self-start. So what did I want to tell you? The quick and dirty thing. Where can we find one to show you? I guess right here. Here's, and we'll, we'll rebuild one of these 65As. I think most of you are going to be interested in that. And it's so similar to the 5861, just 12 volt armature, 12 volt field coils versus 6 volt and 6 volt, but similar construction. Here's a gravy lick a buddy taught me. The, uh, how can we show you? Here's the terminals, right? Oh, this might be work. Here's the terminals, field and armature, or armature and field, which is which. Oh, we can also show you Harley Davidson, you know, 65A, F. I just saw F. Okay, there's the field. What happens is people wrench on these things, and it twists this little square nut. You can see this one is twisted pretty bad. All right, let me get a flashlight. See that one there, how, how twisted it is? See how it's digging? Well, there's a paper spacer. That can't touch this metal. It'll short things out. So what happens is people muscle, you know, over-tighten animals, moose cholock, over-tighten it. It rotates the base, rotates this, and cuts through the paper and shorts it out. You don't even have to take the generator off the bike. You loosen this nut. You know, you take the, the, the wire connection nut off. Remove that nut. And you can just, maybe with needle nose, rotate it back and then gently holding it with the needle nose so you don't scar it up. Hopefully you can get the, the tightening nut, the base nut here. Let me show you. Get this nut down enough so that it does. So now you've got a little air gap on that corner and it will actually start working again. It's like magic. Doesn't happen often. I think there's a plastic version of that spacer, but... Paper might actually be better because plastic creeps under stress. So this stuff gets real hot. You know, if I got a generator test set, we'll be in some later shows. So here's this setup. Let's see. Come on, get in here. So you can see what I mean. There's one paper spacer to the frame. There's a little round thing that goes in. And, you know, that, that space is to there so, so that the bolt doesn't short around. This paper, then here's this other paper. You see it? That. And obviously the turned up part of the paper goes here. So that's always something you check when you rebuild them. Make sure that there's a nice clean piece of paper, you know, that, that it's not turned in and been over torqued so much that it's cut through that paper. What else? Field coils. Well, let's get a whole one here. 
This one has that, this is where that came from. So there's two field coils. They come in 6 volt and 12 volt. You can take an ohm meter, measure across, and you can just measure from the field terminal to the armature terminal. Uh, disconnect the regulator probably is your safest bet. If I remember right, 5.8 or so for 12 volt, 3 something for 6 volt, lower for 6 volt, which kind of makes sense. Uh, pulling that field terminal to ground is what turns this on. The other, one end of this field is tied to the armature. So as the voltage comes up, as the bike starts running, the armature voltage goes up and up. And then to get generator output, you pull that field down. So you're putting 12 volts across the field that way. It's kind of backwards. But especially for electronics, there's good reasons to do it. What else are we going to show you? Here's a field coil taken apart. I'm, you know, I rarely take them out. Here's a field coil. It would be serviceable, except you can't solder this stuff. It's way too hot inside. Uh, your best bet would be like crimp, barrel crimps. If you've got to make, make this connection, like here, see what they did here. See, here they can weld. You can copper weld. And if you can manage to melt the copper together, bless your heart. So the field terminals don't make too much trouble, right? Most of the times I've had dead bikes, it's the armature. And so here's an armature. Because of the needle bearing, let's show you the needle bearings. Here's, it's interesting. I got this long one. But this is, I think, the real needle bearing. This longer needle bearing might be, let's see if it fits. Yeah, it fits fine. It, uh, it, it listen to the crunchiness. Uh, it might be for an aftermarket, right, an improved. And I should mention, this was made by, I think they were designed and built by Prestolite years ago. But Harley Davidson, here it is. This one, you will see this back here. You should be able to read it just barely, especially if I can focus it. Cycle electric. Apparently, word is they bought the tooling from Prestolite because Prestolite and nobody wanted generators anymore and it was a low volume thing. So s these were almost copies, but what's different, like uh, this end cap, it's aluminum. The old original end cap, steel or cast iron, I'm not sure which. So, not the same same. There's aftermarket, not, I, maybe even cycle electric sells them. Uh, chromed. Chrome is fine. Do not put those snap-on covers. They make things run way too hot. You want to keep heat out of anything. There is in a similar principle. Uh, dropping stuff. There was a voltage thing. I, I think this might have been a CCI thing. That, that uh, this one, let's see, did this one mount on the outside? This one might have mounted on the outside. There's one where they took the brush plate, which is this thing, and they put electronics here. Uh, it gets awful hot. I don't know, you know, I, I wouldn't trust it. So the brushes, you know, it's a little tricky. You put the brushes in like this. You know, the wire's, short, the wire's closer here. Keep losing focus. Sorry, folks. And, you know, there's a slot. And, and the tricky thing is to hold them back as you put it on. When we rebuild one of these, you'll see all the detail stuff. You know, there's, there's tricks about how you turn these nuts to make sure the wires are coming off just right, that this wire that goes to the field, or I'm sorry, goes to the uh, armature. I guess. Yeah, because this is the output, right? It's coming off of the brush through that terminal that goes out. So there's things like this. This is a kickstart bike, maybe a magneto, and the lights flicker at idle. So they used to sell these battery eliminators, which is a big, giant capacitor. I'd, I would put a battery on the bike because I've got a broken collarbone from getting hit from behind at a stoplight. So I like my taillights bright and working and not flickering. That was one of the worst things about when I had my 62 set up as a magneto bike. What else? Well, you know, there's an ohmmeter. You can, you can measure, see if your field coils are dead. Well, like I say, we'll get into this next few shows. Here's, oh, here's one of the, 
in the in the bearing cap, let me find you a cap. Here's one cap, right? This goes in here. And then here's the cap by the engine, or you know, it goes in, and there's another seal here and a big roller bearing. It's got a circlip and a roller bearing. Rebuilding them isn't the end of the world. I wanted to show you when things go wrong, there's a lot of where is it? This is it. So you look at this armature and you say, oh man, look, it's all bright and shiny. This looks good. Threads here aren't chewed up. And come over to this side and look at what that needle bearing has done. Completely disintegrated. So now maybe the theory is you might be able to save this. Boy, you can feel how loose it is compared to the factory one, which I had sitting around here somewhere. I got a fact, I don't want to get it dirty. Oh, here it is. Here's a factory one used. No, you, you can just see, you know, feel things when you work on it. So you can just see how sloppy this is. You got a better one? Here's a good one. Still a little sloppy, but not too bad. And then I think we got some more pristine ones here. Much tighter, right? No rock there. So, good to know. This thing is a growler. It's got a coil and two big magnetic poles here and just hooks up to line voltage, 60 cycles, zing, zing. And so that's throwing the magnetism from these poles gets transferred here and then goes, makes voltage here. You can check for shorted coils if it's got shorted windings in it. When you turn it on and rotate it, see nothing happens. That's good. That means there's nothing and you can go around. If it has a short, let's just find something to short this with. It's too organized. I had one. Oh, here's a good thing to short it with. They say don't pull them off and leave it empty. Is the audio coming in? Yeah, you should hear it. Because it might over voltage this thing inside. I can pretend it's shorted by just taking some metal. See, see how this thing's hopping now? See how it sticks? And it's hopping? And then there's a meter and an you know, one thing is just checking continuity. Is it shorted? Well, let's turn it off. Is it shorted to uh, any of the commutator segments shorted to, let's come over here. Are any of these individual commutator segments shorted to, to the metal frame? That's bad. And then there's another probe on it with, with, with like two needles. You can go side by side in a voltmeter and that tells you how much any adjacent pair is making. And that I haven't found the manual online yet. If anybody has one, let me know. Armatures, like I say, are what failed. The old original armatures used to have mica and be really expensive. Then they started molding them. So, so the first thing, you can just feel around the commutator. Some of the cheap ones, they would drop a segment. So that brush is popping and, you know, the regulator doesn't know what to do. They say don't use emery paper to clean them because it'll take grit emery and stick it in here and that'll grind your brush down. I really wonder. Maybe steel wool? I don't know. They don't have to, you know, they can be dark and still work just fine. Air gap, that's that thing about residual magnetism, how much it builds up on its own. You need a tight air gap between here and those field poles. So that's a factor between a hot generator that just starts up, you know, even with maybe with an electronic, uh, not ignition, electronic regulator. Oh, we bike idles and it's working, it's regulating versus one with a bigger air gap. It, uh, any kind of air gap between the armature and the poles loses a whole bunch of output. So anything else? A bunch of aftermarket regulators. This is, I think, a car regulator. I, don't th I think I bought this just to see what a car regulator like. It looks brand new. So I'm not sure. I used to have a 39 Pontiac, but I left that in Michigan. So. Uh, the oil slingers, that's a difference, right? The K models had this type of thing. The oil sling 
the oil would sling out of these holes, and there, there was actually a spring-loaded bushing here that went here that let the oil or let the air go down to that breather tube in your camshaft cover, or your cam case, your gear case cover, let it go down there, and then the oil would sling out, you know, these holes, the centrifugal force. Later, they, as always, cost reduced and just went to this flat washer and then changed that whole expensive spring-loaded breather assembly. So now the oil comes and slings off of this, this washer, and the air has to kind of work around it and get out to the breather tube. Then in 77, everything got goofy. They put a check valve, and that's a different story. We'll get into that one day. So those are just the basic things I wanted to touch about. I won't, don't want to take too long. We'll get, I have a test set that I built. And so we'll go through one of these. We'll rebuild it. I'll fire it up. We'll compare the output of one of these to one of these to one of the six volts, right? To, to this, maybe we'll get this, figure out how to spin this alternator. So that's all. Next few shows, we'll, we'll look into that. I still got the 82 to push the Timken. Got the wrong tool. It's a dash A. It's supposed to be a, a B for Sportsters. Smaller Timken. So that's coming. Uh, and then we'll B blast that side. We'll show you how that's going. But I had to do something. In the meantime, I thought, hauling out the generators. Check the sky cam out. Huh? We got a whole bunch of them. So this was good for me because it emptied like four different boxes and all this stuff moved from California to Florida at a dollar a pound. And then again, I, I, I moved myself from down south in Florida, not far south, but you know, south of Tampa to here east of Tampa. So we'll be back next time, get more into these generators, take them apart, show you how to rebuild them, show them any problems as it occurs to me as I go through it. But that's the general overview. Check out that Harley K model website for details and the parts books that'll tell you exactly. Because I, I guarantee you, if you have an early 65 Sportster that you want to make a 100 point show bike, it better have the six month only 65 part generator in it, not the 65A, because they did probably some internal improvements. So that's a tip. Catch you folks next time. Bye now.